Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo, and I'm here once again to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional with you. Now, the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Now, if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, or you know me personally, you may be asking, Sister Tayo, why are you sharing this particular daily devotional? Why not another one? Because we have many great Christian daily devotionals in the body of Christ, many great Christian books. Why have I chosen to share this one well the reason i'm sharing this particular daily devotional is because as i prepared to enter into the year 2020 which was two years ago the spirit of god instructed me to begin to share this particular daily devotional on youtube to be very specific so i shared the devotional for that for some months in 2020 and 2021 and in this year 2022 i've resumed sharing from and for the months of july onwards as the spirit of god instructed me and even though i share the daily devotional i listen to the messages on a daily basis and i am mightily blessed and i know you will be too and while you're on my channel please don't forget to subscribe tap the notification bell drop a comment ask a question and the lord will give you a favorable answer in jesus name now uh pastor deboe led me to christ in october 1997 many years ago when i was an undergraduate in the university of lagos in nigeria in west africa and Pastor Adeboye's unique style of teaching is that he'll give you a few scriptures from the Bible, he'll give you a memory verse. When you combine those two pieces of scripture, it helps you to understand the body of the text and what the Spirit of God is saying to the reader of the daily devotional on that particular day. Amen. So I encourage you to um, you know, get a copy of this and I know to bless you. So today is November the 11th, Friday, November, November the 11th and we all love Friday. And the title of today's daily devotional is very interesting. It's titled Divine Victory Over Barrenness. Divine Victory Over Barrenness. Amen. And this doesn't, when people talk about barrenness, they think it relates to only uh, women. No, it doesn't. God's word is for everyone. Amen. And I know this will bless you as you listen. Our scriptural reading is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 18 from verses 9 to 14. Genesis chapter 18 verses 9 to 14. And I'll be reading from the traditional King James Version. Sometimes I read from the more modern translation if I feel that the King James is a bit too complex. But it's quite fairly easy to understand and I'm going to explain as well. And this is a very popular story. So if you've been coming to church regular, you definitely know the story of Sarah and Abraham. Amen. You should do. So let's go into the word of God. Genesis chapter 18 verses 9 to 14, 6 verses. Verse 9, And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And he ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself. Saying, after I'm waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I of a shorty bear a child which I'm old? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Oh, amazing. Glory to God. Now, this is a very true story, um, very true, very, very true. In fact, um, we are, the Bible says we should look up to our father Abraham and to Sarah who bought us. Hallelujah. So, Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham. And because we are Christ, we are Abraham's seed. So, in this story, this amazing story that the Spirit of God is bringing to us, hallelujah, this is a glorious story showing the power of of God so God um, the, the God the father um, the report had come to him about Sodom and Gomorrah and so he came down in form of a man with two angels and uh, you know he called Abraham his friend he said shall I hide anything from Abraham you know his friend so the, he came down in form of a man to go and see if the report that had been given to him about Sodom and Gomorrah was so but he, he planned to stop by at Abraham's place that's why I call it divine visitation so and he as they were going they they just planned to walk by abraham and abraham stopped them and said you know i know you guys are going on a journey why don't you come you know just stop get something to drink let's just give you something to you before you continue on your journey he knew by the spirit that this was the almighty god and two angels do you understand he knew he knew he had that spirit or he just knew you know so god stopped with the two angels and this conversation happened 
And he said, so Sarah, Abraham was a hundred years old, you know, and God had promised him at the age of 75 that he would have a son. So God waited for him to grow very old. The Bible says that now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age and he ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So, you know, in those days, this, this is not that maybe, you know, Sarah, um, you know, um, got married late and, you know, had children late. She was married in those days, they used to marry like 16, 17. So this one was really barren. She, she just didn't have she just couldn't have a child and you know it's not that maybe she had gone around the town she was married to abraham that was her old man she had known but she just didn't produce children and um maybe it was according to god's divine timetable anyway so um abraham then said to sarah you know we have visitors prepare something you he went and got a cow got a young man to kill you need bread you know she said to sarah so sarah was, sarah was cooking behind the tent and the Lord said to, God said, God the Father said to Abraham, that your wife Sarah shall bear a child, a, bear a son. <laughs> and Sarah heard it in the tent and laughed. And very rightly so, because she was 90 years old. Then the Lord, God said something that we must never, to, never forget. He said in verse 14, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And this is a guiding light to us that no matter what our situation is, that there's nothing that God cannot turn around. Is there anything too hard for for the Lord, say, I'm the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? You know, um, the angel said to Mary, "Say for with God, nothing shall be called impossible. And then Jesus Christ upped it and said, with God, all things are possible. He says, is anything too hard for me? And that at this, according to the time of life, Sarah will bear a child. And that is exactly what happened. Sarah had a son and named him Isaac. Praise the Lord. Now, the memory verse is, Take it from the book of Second Kings 4, 17. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. So, according to the time of life is nine months. It was nine months then and it's nine months now. According to the life, you know, God said, according to the time of life. That's what the father said. And in this memory verse, Elisha also said the same thing, according to the time of life. Praise the Lord. Divine victory over barrenness. Pastor says that in Genesis 18, 9 to 14, God told Abraham that Sarah would have a son within a year. But she laughed, thinking it was impossible because she was too old and had been barren for so long. Even though the promise of childbirth seemed completely impossible, Sarah was carrying her baby nine months later. Pastor says it doesn't matter for how long you have been barren. You'll be carrying, we will be carrying our babies this time next year in Jesus' name. But is anything too hard for the Lord? If God said it, he would do it. God is faithful. He can do all things are possible. Jesus Christ said all things are possible with God. And that's exactly what happened to Sarah. You know, God wanted her to be very, very old. So that, you know, the, um, it won't be like, oh, they said, oh, 75. You know, she was still okay. She could say, yes, so we've seen women have children. But at 90, it was very, very impossible. Her womb was dead. According to the book of Romans, her womb was dead. Abraham himself was dead, you know, dead physically. He was an old man. But when the word of God comes, the Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it divided asunder the soul and the spirit, you know. <laughs> and it's a designer of the intents and the thoughts of the heart. And that's like that word that God spoke quickened Sarah and she had a child. And you know, um, when I, I read this, I remember the testimony about um, when I was watching uh, Bishop Redeco on Living, Living Faith, and there was a testimony of a 60 year old woman who had a child, you know. And I was like, What? You know, and this woman had been married for 40 years. She and her husband, she was married when she was 20, she had been barren for 40 years, but her, she didn't give up, you know. So when we were praying for women that needed fruit of the womb, she was praying, she was 60 years old, and she had a child. I saw the child with my, my eyes. So when I got to church the next day, I told my pastors, I said, behold, I've seen a great thing today. <laughs> you know, I said a 60-year-old woman had a baby in, you know, I mentioned the church. And she was like, oh, yes, that that woman is her mother's friend. And that her mother has gone to see the baby. <laughs> is there anything too hard for the Lord? Real story, you know. Then pastor goes on. He says, many women in the redeemed Christian church of God have given birth long after menopause. This shows that nothing is impossible with the God we serve, the, with the God we serve. No matter how long someone's case of barrenness is, he's able to turn it around. <laughs> For God, all things are possible. God, just 
open your if it's if it's god we're dealing with the god of abraham isaac and jacob the same yesterday today and forever if he did it for sarah then he would do it again hallelujah under the same circumstances amen there was a woman who the doctor this third paragraph there was a woman who the doctor said had no womb the husband's relative also told him to start disturbing himself because they had removed his wife's womb spiritually the couple attended one of our programs one day and god said i should tell the people that he will give babies to someone in the congregation who had no womb that month she became pregnant her husband took her abroad to deliver the baby and told the doctors to conduct a cesarean session so so as to avoid complications and after delivery the doctor searched but didn't see any womb my daddy showed the whole world that he can bring something out of nothing if he could do that for that couple yours would be would not be difficult for him praise the lord i remember a woman gave a testimony also um in the camp and you know she had been looking for looking up to god for a child and she went for the holy ghost you know it's look you see um where the spirit of the lord is there's emancipation from bondage where the spirit of the lord is there's liberty so when the spirit anything can happen so she she um pastor's wife mommy geo as we fondly call her when she got up from the chair this woman went and sat down on that chair because you see faith always finds a way and she, as she sat on that chair she said lord this woman this this pastor's wife she doesn't need her womb anymore please give me her womb because i need children and you know she conceived because god is no respecter of persons amen you know and you can't say ah how can god do that he did it he, he showed you the evidence the children are the evidence and you know this is another step forward the woman had no womb because if the woman has a womb there's still hope that the god that did sarah can still do her own but this 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 case this woman had no womb you know so it was all hope is lost but you know christ in us is the hope of glory praise god christ in us is the hope of glory and without a womb, she produces a child because God is able to call to existence things that do not exist as though they were, they, they were. So he's able to bring something out of nothing. It's only him that can do it. There's no other God like the God of Abraham. Amen. And that couple brought forth a child. I heard another story of another woman. I think this was a mountain of fire. And she didn't have a womb. You know, she didn't have a womb. And she, um, the word of God came for that God was going to give a child to a woman who did not have a womb you know when god wants to do when he wants to do he, when he wants to move in a way that is beyond human thinking and she got pregnant and had a child and because when the doctor that performed the hysterectomy heard that she had had a child he gave his heart to christ because he was the one that performed the hysterectomy and this woman brought forth a child without a womb these are true stories no 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 exaggeration in first in second kings 4 verses 8 to 7 the bible tells us when elisha told the shunammite woman that she would have a son she said man of god don't deceive me in other words she she told him not to lie to her the devil wants you to feel that god can be a liar god will prove himself to you that he doesn't lie in first samuel 1 to 6 the bible calls penina an adversary she constantly mocked hannah about her barrenness but when the almighty God moved in, she was silenced. Anyone who is mocking you, pastor says, now will soon come and rejoice with you. In Jesus' name, I say big, big amen. So the memory verse where we read that, and the woman conceived and bare a son at that season, that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. So this was Elisha the prophet. He had a servant that walked with him called the Gehazi. And, you know, this rich woman, she was called the Shunammite woman. She would see the prophet passing, you know, the front of her house. So she took permission from her husband. She said to her husband, look, this man is a man of God, you know, he's a prophet. And he's, he's passing here every time on his journey to the school of his prophet, wherever he's going. Let's just build him a penthouse, okay, with a room a bed, a table, and a lamp. So when he's passing by, he can just stop and rest there. At least spend the night before he continues his journey. And her husband gave her the permission. So Elisha will stop there. She was a rich woman, the Bible says. So one day he was moved by her kindness. And then he said to Gehazi, what can we do for this woman? So she, he called her and said, what can I do for you? Shall I speak to the king, you know, to tell the king to do something? Maybe you need a favor or speak to somebody, the commander of the army. She said, no i live among my people you know i don't have any problem you know and everything then the 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 prophet asked his servant what shall be done for this shunammite so the, the servant then said that the woman has no son 
she has no child and her husband is old amen so elisha called her and said as the lord god liveth according to the life time of life you will bear a son and she said <laughs> it was very funny she said Lila said prophet don't lie to me don't lie to me I said don't deceive your mate servant but according to the time of life she had a child why because god is the same yesterday today and forever he changed it not he said jesus said to um to Mary, he said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And God is saying the same thing to any man or woman that if you believe that there's nothing to hide for God, absolutely nothing. Barrenness can make a person lose the desire to stay alive. In Genesis 30 verses 1 to 2, Rachel said to her husband, give me a son or I die. The good news is that fruit, fruit, fruitlessness of all kinds, whether financial, academic, physical, and spiritual, will become a thing of part of the past in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. You know, Penina constantly abused Hannah. Please don't do that in any form or fashion. Don't ever insult somebody because of what they don't have that God did not give them. No, don't do that. But God put Penina to shame, and God will put every Penina. In our lives to shame anyone who has mocked us god will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies they will see the blessing of god in our lives in jesus name and you know um rachel said the pastor said that barrenness can make people really um like they don't want to live so rachel rachel did not have a child and she said to her husband jacob i said uh, give me a child or i die and jacob said am i in, am I in the place of god am i god you know so but don't let anything make you um prefer to die than to live amen especially if you have done everything under god and you can do nothing anymore just rejoice and give god thanks amen you know and let god do whatever his hand and his counsel have determined before to be done but do not be sorrowful do not be of a sorrowful countenance for god has perfected everything that concerned us he will not forsake us because we are the work of his hands give god thanks only the living can praise the lord but god will come through for you in jesus name Amen. God is faithful, too faithful to fail. Now, pastor says, um, in which area of your life are you trusting God for fruitfulness? Pray to him about it now and he will hear you in Jesus' name. Amen. So like I said, it's not just relating to physical barrenness and it's not just relating to women. No, no, no. It's relating to all peoples. Let us pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We come against every form of fruitlessness. We break every financial, academic, physical, spiritual barrenness. We break it. We come up against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare that our faith will not fail in the name of Jesus. Help us, Almighty God, to give thanks to you. The Bible says Abraham continued to give thanks to God, giving glory. He kept giving God glory in the mighty name of Jesus, knowing that God would do what he said he would do in the name of Jesus. Father, don't let our faith fail. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to be fruitful financially, academically, physically, spiritually, mentally, maritally, materially, in every facet of our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. My name again is Sister Temi Tayo. And while you are my channel, please, please do subscribe. Tap the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you're aware. And please share this video freely on your social media platforms, on your WhatsApp groups. And uh, the Lord bless you as you do in Jesus' name. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. My name again is Sister Temi.